Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, today's Friday. Praise God. Now, listen, you know, sometimes we get passionate, just like yesterday, you know, and I, I just feel the Spirit of God needs to get your attention. You see, there is no point preaching if we're all moving in the wrong direction. There's no point. There's no point pastoring people and they are going in the wrong direction. There is no point because you're going to make, um, you're going to answer. You're going to answer the Lord for every step that you take in his name. He will answer for it. So I'll advise you, today is Friday, just like I always tell you, take this weekend, listen to this message from the beginning. Just listen and listen and get blessed. And then I always tell you this, even though what I tell you is true, I can stand by it any day. I'm not, I'm not the one who will come years later or, or come tomorrow and tell you that I just discovered everything I've been preaching is false. You know, fear those people. Fear people like that. Praise God. Anyways, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, as preachers, we are under authority. And that's one thing you must sense about the preacher. You must see that he's, number one, a follower of Jesus. You must see it. Not because he said it. You must see it. One who's following Jesus uh, also means he's under the authority of Jesus. And he said, when you deal with people who are under authority, you will know. You will know. There are, there are times you walk into an office and you're trying to size up who is the boss here. Yeah. And the way they all talk, you will know. You can tell. Even though no one introduces himself as the boss, when you just look at, maybe you, you enter a room and there are four people standing, no one is sitting on the, the, the main chair, okay? Now they are all standing and they are, they are discussing. And you just sit down and you're listening to their discussion. In no time, you will know who the boss is, if you're observant. Because you'll see that others will speak as those under authority. Okay, you find them say that, well, subject to your approval. Okay, I would suggest we do this. But well, this is what I think. Now, the boss doesn't say, this is what I think. The boss gives judgment. You understand what I'm saying? The boss said, all right, so this is what we're going to do. Based on what everybody has said, this is what we're going to do. Now, you just know in that instant that, okay, that's the boss. See, so as preachers, we, we speak as those who are under authority. And now, if you have not been given an authority concerning something, then you better be careful how you speak concerning that thing. Each one of us have our area that God has given us authority over. And, and, and according to the authority he has given to you, see grace in that area. You understand what I'm saying? Now, even though all of us have been called to believe in Jesus, all of us have been called to do, he has called us to walk with him. Now, in walking with him, there are different things he's going to instruct you to do. But then also, in your walk with him, you would sense that there is, there is an authority or there is some grace that he's giving to you. And that grace comes with some measure of authority. But even in that, you know that you're still subject to authority. Okay? So when you speak, you don't speak carelessly like you're the boss. You know it all. You speak like one who's under authority. So that's why sometimes I tell you, you don't have to believe me. But go back to the Lord and ask him. Please do that one. Even if you say, I don't believe you, Pastor George. I don't believe you. It's okay. But, but you see, don't stop there. Try and prove me wrong. And the only way you can prove me wrong is not by reading the scriptures. It's by going to the Lord. Because I've read all the scriptures. 
I have. <laughs> I've read all the scriptures. And my authority is not coming from the reading of the scriptures. From the reading of the scriptures, I have gone to the one who author everything in the scripture is talking about. Because Jesus said, these scriptures, they bear witness of him. Oh, if the scripture is bearing witness of him, why don't I go to him? See, that's the mentality. So I go to him and say, okay, Lord, the scripture says this, the scripture says this. Now imagine putting scriptures to the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? And then he said, this is the truth. He doesn't even have to tell you, let me show you Joshua chapter 1 verse this. I said this. He doesn't. He will tell you the truth. Now if you know the scriptures, after he tells you the truth, mm, now I understand why Joshua said this. Now this is going to be happening to you. Wow, now I see. Ooh, now, uh -huh, it's making sense now. His word will always make sense in light of scriptures. His words will never be against scripture. I told you most times when people say, hey, but the scripture is, it's they that don't understand the scriptures. Just like Jesus told them. You err because you don't understand the scriptures. Or you don't understand the power of God. These two things. See? You don't understand the scripture because there is, I mean, everything that is going to happen, there's the scripture has already bore witness concerning it. Yeah, that's why we read the Bible. You may not understand it now, but you say, believe it. Because you will find a witness. You will find the witness of it in scriptures. Okay? And, 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 Jesus, for example, you know, I, I think I said this sometime back. All the prophecies that were given of Jesus, all the prophecies, when they were being fulfilled before the eyes of people who were custodians of the scriptures, they didn't realize it. And it's the same thing that is happening today. I told you that's why, you know, I got to that point where I said, I don't think, um, and, I, and I had a, a, a witness from the Lord concerning him, said, because the Lord told me, he said, the problem with teaching prophecies is that you never understand prophecies until they come to pass. Now, that's what the Lord told me. You know, because I've done several series on the book of Revelation. And I noticed that each time I do a series of, on Revelation, something changes. Something changes. So I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, let it not be as though we are lying to people that's when the Lord told. Now, why was I doing the series on 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 what's it called on on the Book of Revelation and eschatology and all those? Why why was I doing those teachings? Because I saw people doing those teachings, and then I felt I had understanding in all sincerity. But then I also noticed, and if you're a sincere preacher, you would know. If you're not stuck with your message, because sometimes we we preach on a subject, and three years, five years down the line, I want to preach. We'll still go and carry our old note and preach exactly the same thing. No. If five years from now, or from when you preach that in last, one year is even enough. If one year after you preach a message, and you're preaching that message again, you've not seen deeper lights concerning that thing, then something's wrong. You're not growing. True, you're not growing. So you're teaching something, and then you notice that some key points or some arrowheads have changed. Why? Because the world has advanced, okay? And now those interpretations you give, that's the problem. The problem is not with the scripture. The problem is mostly with the interpretation. And when you're teaching eschatology and, and revelations, you notice that interpretation matters, okay? If you remove interpretation, then you have nothing to teach. If you're telling people that these are signs, these are things that are going to happen, you must interpret them. So I realized that our interpretations keep changing. And then you know something is wrong. So I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, what's the real truth about this thing? I mean, I don't want to teach this thing again and have to now answer um, certain questions. Even if people don't ask you questions, you are smart enough to know that there are questions. <laughs> have you ever finished preaching and, and just look at the congregation like these people, <sighs> I think they have a lot of questions to, to ask. You know, sometimes as preachers, we walk with that liberty of, I finished teaching, believe me, I go away, praise God. No, no. You should be ready to answer any question at any time. 
Because what you're teaching is truth. Not just what you copied from someone else, but you know you are partaking of this truth. And so in that place of talking to the Lord and asking him, like, Lord, then the Lord said this to me. You can never explain a prophecy until it comes to pass. That's when you can explain it. So every attempt to explain these prophecies, Jesus, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his children. It will, it, behold, this shall be the sign. Behold, a virgin shall give birth. Okay. And all the prophecies spoken of Jesus, when it was coming to pass, before their eyes, they had read it. The Bible says, the, the Isaiah had spoken and said, a virgin shall give birth. But guess what? When Mary took in, and they, they knew that, okay, there was some story about her and Joseph being betrothed and she getting pregnant. So Jesus was accused of being a child born of adultery. Well, you didn't know that? Prophecy was being fulfilled before their eyes, yet they accused them of being pregnant before their wedding day. They, they accused Mary of that. They said it before Jesus. When they were speaking to him and they were arguing, they said, we are the seed of Abraham. We were not born of adultery. Mm. They were sending a message to him. We know, we know your story. Now, that's why it was difficult for them to believe in Jesus. Don't you get it? Say, we knew you. Are you? We, especially in his hometown. The Bible says he could not do any miracle in his hometown of Nazareth. Why? Because of their unbelief. Who are you? Where do you go? You know, just like someone you know, you all grew up together and everything. The guy just traveled one time and comes back and he's doing signs and wonders. Even you, you will suspect him. They say, where have you gone to? Have you gone to that place that is to? <laughs> you understand what I'm doing? Something is not just right. Please, uh, we know you. We know your mother. Also, we know the story surrounding your birth. We know. Meanwhile, it was prophecy that was being fulfilled. Can you see that now? Now, that's why you can be in the midst of the fulfillment of the prophecy and not realize it. Don't think you will know. So, now, here's what the Lord taught me. And I'm going to share this with you. So, I asked the Lord. I said, okay, Lord. So, how do we relate with revelation, the things John spoke about, the things Jesus spoke about in Matthew also. How do we relate with it? And here's what the Lord said to me. He said, Simeon, Simeon was led by the Spirit of God into the temple when Jesus was brought to the temple. They didn't send a message to him and say, sir, there's a new baby and this baby looks like the baby that was prophesied about. No. He was where he was and the Spirit of God said, Today, go to the temple and do a dedication for that thing that I told you about. See, God had spoken to him about it. And then he received the word of the Lord and went. So here is, the, here is what the Lord said to me. He said, if you don't want to miss anything, simply be led by the Spirit of God. Is as simple. If you are waiting for someone to tell you the rapture of the church or Jesus is coming or so, so, and so, then you will wait and miss it. Trust me, you will miss it. So I'm living my life holy, and so that when the rapture happens, the rapture is not going to take anyone by surprise. Those that are going, no, they are going to be led. Jesus himself said that when he comes, he will send his angels and they will gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. <laughs> don't think anyone will stand and say hey if you're a child of God gather out gather out ga no Jesus said it that it will be like the days of Noah everybody will be busy doing whatever they are doing meanwhile in the midst of that God will be gathering the elect one after the other how will he gather them Jesus said they will hear my voice I come in that. they will hear my voice If you don't hear his voice today, why do you think on that day be the only day you hear his voice? You will deny the voice. 
I was like, eh, me, eh, I'm just, I'm just waiting. Eh, there's no way I'll miss rapture. I'll do my own thing. But that day, once I just said, pump, hey, Jesus, for me, for me, for me. You will not hear that pump. You will not hear it. <laughs> Praise God. You'll be doing your thing and busy. And then you will wake up one day and realize, I pray that it's not you. But some people, they may be pastors, they may be church, committed church members. Yes. Hear me, Jesus is not coming for those that have led, I mean, a pious life. No. He will sound his voice. And if you don't hear that voice, or if you ignore that voice, no matter how righteous you have been living your life, human, physically speaking, everybody thinks you're righteous. If you miss the voice of God, you miss it. The day he gathers, if you miss that voice, you miss it. Then it will be, it will be said concerning you, you are part of the foolish virgins. Remember, ten virgins, all virgins, five wise, five foolish. Even the foolish ones were still virgins. It was their actions that revealed, even though they were virgins, please get it. So I've, I've never stolen in my life. I've never fornicated. I have never cheated. I have never, never in my life. It doesn't guarantee your place in heaven. What guarantees your place in Christ? What guarantees your place in his kingdom? Because there's a place in his kingdom for you. And guess what? Like Jesus said in the book of Matthew, he says, I come in now. <laughs> Receive the inheritance that was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Can you see it? It was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Nothing new. Nothing new. You see, that's why I, I, I come to this consciousness and I'm, I'm going to share it with you. No matter what you do, Sometimes you want to do big things for God. It's a good desire. You want to sound and then the whole world will hear you. Yes, it's a good thing because if you're sounding the right sound, everybody should hear you. But you say, beyond all that, let that itself not become your own distraction. Make sure in the midst of all your work, you still hear him, truly. Not the angel. Because see, <clears throat> The Lord had to teach me the difference between the, the, the voice of the angel and his voice. They are not the same. There are a lot of pastors who relate more with the angel and not even him. See, he wants to relate with you, but the angel is associated to your assignment. So when you're so assignment driven, when you're all assignment conscious, what do I do today? What do I do today? What do, where are we going to next? Where are we going to next? You'll find yourself that you're relating more with the angel and he'll give you activities. He'll give you work to do. And you may be relating so well with the angel and then you miss him. Yes. Because when, when, when he's, the, see, he, he's the one that straightens you out. He's the one that tells you that is not true. Because no angel can reveal truth to you. That's why I say truth is not discovered. It is revealed. No angel has the audacity, authority. They don't even know it to reveal truth to you. They don't. They can only come to you to show you the scripts that have been written. It is the Lord himself that will reveal truth to you. So he takes you behind you. And then he starts teaching you truth. That's what he does. He is the one you should relate more with. No matter what you do, always fall back to him. Say, Lord, how did we do today? He's the one that was treating you out. And there is no way you will, because now he's training you and teaching you. Oh, there's an assignment. What's the assignment? 
Um, the bridegroom is coming. Let's all go wait for him. Now, that's not the voice of the Lord. That's the voice of an angel. Okay, so, bam, bam, bam. Get everything ready. Let's go. And then, then you go. Yeah. But then when you relate with him, he's the same one that will tell you, hey, carry enough oil. Mm. But just to go and meet, carry enough oil. Mm. Okay, sir. And you carry it. So when others are complaining, oh, my oil is finished. My oil, can I get some oil? Uh, he told me, carry enough oil. So I don't know how enough is enough. <laughs> you know what I'm so I've carried what I think is enough. And I'm not going to jettison myself by, uh, by, by giving some out. Now, that's why those angels, those, those virgins, they didn't give their oil, the, the wise ones. That's why they didn't give their oil. That was the difference. Some knew him. The others did not know him. I pray that you will know him. I pray that you will know him. That's my prayer for you. Know him. Relate with him. And let him build himself up in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray this will be a fantastic weekend for you. That the Spirit of God will carry you and load you with his truth. And from his truth, you'll begin to experience freedom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye.